the D Lab in the shop today, I've got a PB Classic 30 amp. This is a tube type amp. It runs four 6BQ5 tubes, and unfortunately, it's built on circuit boards. But it's a tube amp, so I'll work on it. It came in with this horrendous hum issue. I'll let you hear it, we'll put it on the scope, and hopefully get it fixed. All right, so the amp is on, warming up. Volume is all the way down. Take a listen to this hum. She'll come up in a minute. I'm not gonna run it long, because I don't want to damage the tubes. Boom! Enough of that. Okay, so you know I always look for the obvious. Let me show you the first thing I spotted, and I was hoping this would solve it, but of course it never does. Here's the insides of the amp. Now I noticed this cap tucked way under there. Take a look at the end. There's a bunch of goop coming out of it. So I thought, all right, open cap. I checked the schematic, and that's for the screens of the output tubes. So let's put a jumper on there with another cap and see if it solves the problem. So for a quick check, I've soldered this lead on, which is going to another 22 microfarad cap to ground. So if that's all that's wrong, the hum will be gone, right? Let's see. New cap has jumped in, the amp is on. Volume's all the way down, as before. Let's see what our hum level is. Still got hum. Not as bad, but we still got hum. All right, so out of curiosity, I got on the web and I did a search on the PB Classic 30, and I found numerous complaints about junk filter caps used in the build, okay? Now, granted, this is a 20-year-old amp, so you got 20 years out of those caps that are in it, which is probably pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is replace every electrolytic cap in this amp. I bought some nice F and T's. We're gonna start with those, and then I'll give the board a good inspection, make sure there's no bad solder connections, because as you'll see, getting this thing apart is not easy, and I don't wanna do it twice. So here's what I'm up against. There's actually three circuit boards here. There's one here, here and underneath and they're hooked together with these little flexible wire jumpers right so to work on the amp and get these caps out I'm gonna have to remove everything tubes got to come out all the knobs got to come off pretty much total disassembly and then the other thing I noticed that I really don't like is they glued all these caps down so they're gonna be a real bear to get out of there without damaging the circuit board so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna tear it down. I'm not gonna go through that on the video. All that information is clearly shown on the web, how to get this thing apart and back together. But I'll show you the condition of the capacitors and the circuit board, and I'll show the swapping out of the caps, and then we'll hook her back up, and hopefully it's fixed. So there she is, the classic 30 tube amp, circuit board assembly removed. It actually came out a little easier than what I expected. I thought there would be some serious issues clearing these knobs, but they actually just folded right down and popped out. And I noticed too, they've got little right angle brackets down here for the tube board. So you got to be very careful when you're working not to flex that or you could crack the circuit board. So now, let's attack these capacitors. I'm going to take them off one at a time and carefully cut this glue and try not to hurt the board in the process. So to do the work, I've propped this board up on a little plastic tray to support that while I'm pulling these caps so that I don't stress those brackets underneath that I showed you and crack the boards. So I'm going to start with the big 47 microfarad caps. I'm going to take my X-Acto, cut the glue, and then try to pop them guys off. So as I suspected, this glue is some pretty tough stuff. It's almost impossible to slice through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this covering on the electrolytics. I'm going to let that peel away. I'm going to cut these leads, get the cap out of the way. Then I'll work on just getting that plastic coating off of the adhesive. Here's our first cap. It's kind of like taking a shell off an egg. Bam, she comes right out. This would be an easy way 
to remove these and then getting this off with the adhesive shouldn't be too big of an issue. You can see it's still pulling. I'm going to have to work on that. So here's one of the new F&T caps getting ready to be installed. I am putting some adhesive on the bottom of them. I'm not going to overdo it though. Enough to hold it on the board. And of course, make sure that your polarity is correct. There's plus signs on the board so you really can't mess it up. But I'll tell you what, you sure don't want to mess it up. The other thing I wanted to point out is I've been installing these caps without unfolding these boards. I'm leaving the boards as they were so that I don't stress those uh, little wire connections I was showing you. There's plenty of room in here to install them without having to unfold those boards. Save yourself some damage. The other thing is, is when you're done and you're clipping these leads, don't be afraid to leave like eighth or a quarter of an inch on these guys hanging out. You don't have to clip them right next to the board because you can actually stress your solder connection. So leave a little extra. There's like an inch gap here. You can't go wrong. So all the new caps are installed on the board. And while those are setting up, let's check the caps I pulled. I'll start with the 22 microfarad caps. Here's one of them. You can see he's alive. Here's another one. Yeah, it's alive too. Here's that one that had the stuff oozing out of it. It better be bad. Yep, that one's bad. Here's the two 47 microfarad caps, which are the main filters. That guy's toast. Here's another one. Ah, if I get my leads. Also toast. Now let's go up to these 2200 microfarad guys. I don't suspect they are bad. They're only 50 volters. But if we're in there, we're changing them. Yep, that one's okay. And that one's okay. So you can see we had some that were completely dead. That's what was causing the hum. So I gave the board an inspection for bad solder connections. I really didn't find any. The connections were great on these circuit boards. So now I'm going to reassemble it and we'll give her a test. Here we are, the moment of truth. Turn the amp on. Give her some warm-up time. Better not hear any hum. Uh, she's live. So here's a white noise. And there's a volume all the way down. The hum is gone. We have a success. Next step, I get on the scope, run a signal in it, make sure it's clean, but I'm pretty sure we're good to go. So the amp's powered up. We've got an audio generator going to the input. Got a little dummy loaded resistor here on the back side hooked to my scope. I'm bring up the volume here. A little bit and we'll watch on the scope. Here we go. There she is. Nice and clean. Should be good to go. Next step, let's hook back up to the speaker and get this thing in its cabinet. So here it is with the guitar. Sounds like a guitar. Sorry I can't play. But you know D Lab, right? Anyway, everything checks out. The reverb works well. The amp's good to go. So I hope you've learned the lesson that if you've got to work on one of these, change every cap. Don't fool around. Don't think you can get away with changing onesies, twosies, because you're going to be back in the amp. And also, don't go cheap. Buy good caps, like Mallory's or F&T's. Don't buy those off-brand ones, because once again, you'll be back in here doing it again. Hope you enjoyed the video.